name's Lily Jo and I'm going to talk a little bit about the process of grief. So something that I like to use is called the whirlpool of grief and it's a way to kind of explain how grief works. I think if you've got an explanation of kind of what the beginning, what the middle and what the end looks like, it's not as scary. And I think in our culture, in our society, we sort of cover up grief. We sort of don't know what to do and how to be and how to act when somebody dies. But actually, this is gonna help you to process it effectively. So in life, we're bobbing along, we're in our boat and um, life's going relatively well or things are going well and things are normal. And then all of a sudden you hear of a tragedy, you've lost someone, you've lost something. It could be a job, it could be a partner, it could be a friend, it could be a relative, but you have experienced a loss. And at that point in your boat, you kind of fall down the waterfall of bereavement. And the waterfall of bereavement can last for days, it can last for weeks, it can actually last for months, because the thing about grief is that there's actually no time scale on it. So, as you head down the world's full of bereavement, at some point you'll hit what's called the whirlpool of grief. And in the whirlpool of grief, you can be kind of caught right up in the middle of it, where days just feel absolutely dreadful. Other days you can be kind of right around the outsides of it. And you've got to go with the day and embrace that day. So it could be that you need to cry a lot, you need to listen to music that reminds you of the person or doesn't remind you of the person, you need to journal, you need to talk to people that love you, get some support, but just to be really honest with where you're at is really helpful. And the more honest and the more you can get the feelings out, the quicker that this process is. And at some point, you'll come out of the whirlpool of grief and you'll land on the sand. And the sand is like severe emotional breakdown. It's kind of depression, it's kind of really low mood. It's a time when you might need to just stay at home and get under your duvet and, um, and shut the world away. And that's okay, but it's definitely a, a time, it definitely happens within the grieving process. Some people end up on the rocks and on the rocks is where you feel pain and actual physical symptoms. So I've heard of people who've kind of had a bereavement and then they've had like severe headaches or felt sick or back problems even. All those kinds of things are really normal when grieving. So you can go from the rocks to the whirlpool, to the sand, back in the whirlpool, back on the rocks. And there's absolutely no time scale, as I said at the beginning. Well, the good news is that at some point you will get back into the river of life again and when you get back into that river of life that is when you feel acceptance of the reality of the loss it's when you actually go do you know what i've moved past denial i've moved past the shock i've done all my grieving and i actually accept that this person or this thing is now gone and then as you carry on and you travel down the river you can reorganise and you can love again. And that's it. That's the whirlpool of grief.